Hey guys, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks. And this time, we've got the pleasure of watching Obi Frank playing in a tier six Soviet heavy tank that almost needs no introduction. Is it, of course, the infamous K? V2. And I was just taking a look at the channel, seeing what kind of videos I have missed out on on this year. And I haven't had a KV2 game on the channel in a year and a half. And a year and a half too long, right? This is one of my most requested tanks whenever I stream, play KV2, play KV2. Now why is that? Because it's basically the daddy of derp. It's got 152mm main armament with... How much penetration does this tank have on its standard ammunition? It's 86 millimeters of penetration and 910 alpha damage. And that allows you to... Miss the tier 7 French light tank? Okay, uh, maybe a blip in the matrix. Uh, things are going to go better, don't worry. Don't worry, hang in there, ladies and gentlemen. Now the KV-2, if it manages to hit, it would have one shot most of the time. That little French light tank is an absolute beauty. The shell cost is also rather cheap, 810. And even if you fail to hit the target, you still sometimes can do some fantastic splash damage if you land anywhere near their tank. And if you fail to penetrate the target, then of course, because they're large caliber high explosive rounds, you're still quite often taking off 10, 20, 30% of the hit points of the target, depending on how well armored they are and obviously what tier they are. When you get up into a matchup like this in the KV-2, and I, I guess long gone are the days now when this vehicle would be meeting just constant tier 8s because of the new matchmaking system. But when this vehicle did meet constant tier 8s, uh, you just looked at it as an opportunity to be able to get lots of experience. Because of course, when you're shooting tanks that are two tiers higher than you, you're getting 20% more experience than if you shoot equal tiered vehicles. And so when your shells do damage to them anyway and they don't need to penetrate the target, it was just absolutely awesome to, to make those IS-3 drivers or even tier 8 premium tank wielders cry a little bit inside every time you hit their tank and took away some of their life force. Life force, so to say? Yeah, we're gonna go with it. So Obi Frank maybe he hasn't had the best luck so far. He's basically trying to hold the center line here, and he's got that tier 6 Japanese derp heavy alongside him, the OI. And while the OI has the armor, and the OI has some really nice armor-piercing rounds, I, I was really happy that Wargaming didn't replace the KV-2, because the KV-2 still has the high explosive penetration that just gives it that little bit of an edge over the OI. Plus, if you want to get around a little bit quicker than the KV-2, it's kind of good for that. But with a power-to-weight ratio of 11.32, it still isn't marvelous. One thing that isn't marvelous about this game is that Obi Frank's team doesn't see, really seem to be living up to the hype here as they've left the northern flank open and so that means the enemy are basically going to be able to come in and just rip apart the artillery. And what is this? We are three minutes into the game and nothing has died! Come on Obi! Oh my lord! Did you see the shell whiz high and left? And that is because of course when you're playing a tank with point six accuracy and four seconds aim time you're basically rolling the dice and unfortunately for Obi it looks like he's been rolling ones all the way we need him to start rolling some sixes he's got to make a little prey to Serb come on Serb you can do it yep that's more like it nearly 800 damage dealt to a higher tiered light tank oh yeah KV2 first kill. And that's, I guess, what just the roller coaster ride that this tank puts you on. Is that why a lot of you like it? I guess for watching in YouTube videos and streams, probably for the little bit of entertainment value like that, but loads of people still love playing this tank. And it's because you don't even have to hit the tank in a weak point. Obi Frank basically shot that T-34-100 in the mantlet there, and because of course high explosive shells splash then you're still going to be able to, to damage your opponents. How much is the splash radius on this tank? 3.66 meters? So that's pretty much like a third of a mouse. Oh, luck starting to roll. Now, Obi Frank has picked up three kills, which is the same as the rest of his team. He's got to kill a lot more tanks, though, if he wants to get back into this game. So he trundles his tank around and makes his way towards an equal tiered heavy tank, a French heavy tank in the form of the ARL 44, who just pulls back around the corner, but the Black Prince is like, ha ha, don't worry, KV2, I've got this old boy. But okay, you know what, KV2 doesn't seem to really care as he lets the Black Prince do his thing along the mid ridge. The OI goes to back up the Black Prince, but Obi Frank decides that, that big glut of tanks that were spotted towards the northeast must still be making their way in towards the base. 
And it doesn't take... You don't have to be Sherlock Holmes to be able to figure that out. But it looks like maybe you have to be an influential player to be able to predict those situations. And that's really the, the key to success in Water Tanks. One of the big keys to success is to spend a lot of time looking at the minimap and predicting where you need to be before you need to be there. And that's especially important when you're playing your slower tanks. When you're playing your slower tanks, you have to start moving well in advance. You have to be seeing sometimes minutes in advance of the battlefield in the really slow heavy tanks to be able to get to the flank, to hold the position, to hold the base, or just to have a big impact in the game. So, Obi Frank sets up his KV-2. 152mm gun, but oh, the turret traverse is too slow. What is the turret traverse exactly on this tank? The turret traverse is 16 degrees a second, so he's unable to turn the tank quickly. But the Stritzfang M4257 obviously wanted to have a one-way trip back to the garage there as he sits in front of the KV-2 for long enough for Opie Frank to finish him off. Four kills now. Swedish tier 6 premium medium tank taken care of. Now Obi goes around the corner, another tier 6, ARL is going to regret life massively. And the OI, looks like the OI would have had a clean shot in there into Obi, but instead decides to shoot the OI just lower than him. And so that allows Obi to reload, and that's one of the key things in the KV-2. It does have a long reload on this tank, and so that means that you have to, to get yourself into cover between shots. Oh, KV-2 on KV-2 action, ladies and gentlemen. That KV-2 is slightly wounded, down to 761 hit points and so that means that if OB manages to hit a flush surface on the KV-2 then it's quite likely he's going to be able to one shot he won't even have to roll that high. Now the KV-2's armor on the turret is 75 millimeters all round and obviously with over 80 millimeters of penetration on the standard rounds on this tank OB has to have a good penetration roll here oh yeah 761 that's cannibalism isn't it Oh, a bit of a, a KV-2 on KV-2 death there. I'm not sure what to think about that. Well, I guess one KV-2 is at least going to win. Oh, no. Actually, maybe not. Obi's still got his work cut out for him as the OI goes forwards as well to take a swing at the Black Prince. And Obi is just allowed to reload and get forwards. There's the tier 6 Japanese heavy. Okay, KV-2. Time to show it who the real derp daddy is. There you go. And it looks like Obi celebrates as he flicks his mouse around for his seventh kill. 2,900 damage exactly now, and the terrible situation that his team was in has now changed into a, a slightly even or even favorable situation. There's a Stura Mill on the enemy team who has not been spotted. That means the Stura Mill was quite likely to be sitting around this location here, and he would have got shots along this corridor here, and that's how he got a couple of kills without being spotted. However, the Stura Mill also has a very big gun, 128 or 124 millimeter caliber gun, a lot like you would have on the Ferdinand with 490 alpha damage. And so that means that Obi is a one shot. He's got to be very careful here. Where is that Stura Mill going to be? Oh my god, he's right in front of him! Oh! Yeah, there's one good thing about the Stura Mill, and that is a big old gun, a lot like on the KV-2. But there's one absolutely terrible thing about the Stura Mill, and that is horrific hull armor. And so that means that OB Frank just one shot a hired tiered tank destroyer. Oh my word, 850 damage. It looks like he rolled not quite a six there. I guess he rolled kind of like a, a, th a he rolled four or more. That's what he needed to. And I, I guess that's kind of like a, a four and a half maybe roll something like that. Hopefully all you D and D players out there are getting where I'm going. What would the KV2 be if it was in a kind of role playing game? I guess it'd be the big old barbarian, right? Would it be firing fireballs? I don't know what it's firing. Well, actually, I do. It's firing 152mm high explosive shells. So that really puts a, a, a damper on the argument when we think of it. We also know exactly how much damage it's going to do. 910 on average, if you manage to penetrate. And that's, this is what I guess you all and the whole World of Tanks community just loves about the KV-2. But why is it that we all hate the Type 5 Heavy so much? Hmm, maybe we don't mind the KV-2 because it's just a bit of a novelty at tier 6 and because it's armor, I don't think anyone could claim that the KV-2's armor is overpowered. We're talking about 75 millimeters of all-round armor. Even tanks that are two tiers lower than it still have a pretty good chance of penetrating the turret if they manage to catch it flush or the hull. I guess the problem with the, the Type 5 Heavy is that by that stage of the game, armor starts to matter and when high explosive shells 
through tanks that you often have to fire premium rounds at or even get lucky when firing premium rounds at are able to just do huge amounts of damage to you. Yeah, I guess that's where the, the feeling is of the Type 5 Heavy. Although maybe I'm completely mistaken. Maybe this is just me. Maybe the community as a whole doesn't feel the same about the Type 5 Heavy like I do. Nevertheless, Obi Frank making his way over towards the camp circle. It may not be a Type 5, but maybe it's the Type 5 of Tier 6. Nah, let's not look at it like that. This was the original. Don't compare the KV-2 to anything. The KV-2 is a monster in its own right. And there's a higher tiered German self-propelled gun, the GW Panther. Obi gets spotted, so he quite rightly pulls back behind the buildings. But unfortunately for him, now the enemy artillery knows where he is. He doesn't pull all the way back there, because if he did, then the M44 would be able to shoot him, who's likely to be over in this location. So Obi, quite rightly, has actually put himself in a position where he will avoid artillery fire from there and there. So good stuff, Obi. But he decides he must advance. He pushes over. Oh, the GW Panther knocks out his crew. Actually, stuns his crew and does 357 damage. Oh, gosh, where is that Black Prince Obi when you need him? Where's the distraction plan in the form of that Tier 7 British heavy tank? Not quite made it to the front. Nevertheless, Obi now on eight kills. He is contending here for a pools medal to pick up 10. Obi decides to push straight forwards, going into the lion's den. The GW Panther doesn't manage to spot him this time, but Obi does, and so that allows Obi to zero in that shot. And yeah, of course it's gonna penetrate and do 360. Nice flanking maneuver, Obi, although you did get possibly a little lucky that the M40 War wasn't able to follow it up and finish the blow off. And I also think that Obi might have wanted to wait here for the Black Prince to join him, but it doesn't matter anyway, because it looks like Obi's gonna put in the final shot of the game, flying true, knocking out the most profitable non-premium vehicle in World of Tanks. I just can't believe that from my top 10 series, that the M44 is the most profitable vehicle that you can play for a, a non-premium tank, securing his 10th kill and 4,390 damage that we saw. Cementing the tier six Soviet heavy once more has the derp daddy. So Obi Frank nails an ace tank here for 2,216 base experience points. That is base, that's not with a premium account. With a premium account, that's 3,324 just for a victory. That's not a daily double. And Obi also gets a Pascucci's medal for killing two enemy self-propelled guns, a Pools medal for his 10 kills, and a high caliber for the 4,787 damage that he dealt, indicating that he actually managed to do some splash damage probably to the T-3485 earlier. Yep, there we go. It was actually the constructor, the T-34100, I believe, that he was firing at blind. So there's the missing 400. And because the KV-2 has relatively cheap ammunition and it's high explosive, so unless you miss, it always deals damage, he makes 85 thousand credits profit with a premium account and if he hadn't been playing a premium account he would have still made 34,000 credits not bad kv2 so obi frank congratulations to you on this monster kv2 replay and thank you so much for uploading it on the what replays website for the community to enjoy i thoroughly loved it and hopefully all of you lovely ladies and gentlemen out there enjoyed this video if you did give it a thumbs up but if you hated it give it a thumbs down and let me know in the comments what is your go-to tank when everything is just going absolutely wrong and as always thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.